and start seeing it go live here in a second. Here we go. Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's live virtual kitchen. We're pretty stoked here to have one of our partners on the um, show today. And we've got some great ideas, lots of information that's going to be coming out today. So I'm going to introduce a few people here that are uh, enjoying themselves. I think they are the only people in the food service industry working the day after Canada Day, but I'm going to introduce them here in a second and uh, we'll move on to the show today. So there we go. So welcome, Sherry, Chef. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so I'm going to do some intros and hopefully I don't screw things up. Um, but um, that's what today is, right? It's the day after we make our shows very casual, a lot of fun, and very informative. So we have Sherry, L L say it again, Sherry. The last Lammer, day. Lammer. There, there you go. I'm not going to screw it up. Sorry. Yeah. I She's do. a regional director of sales, so we have a huge big wig on the call today, right after Canada today, and she's all excited. And then we have Char uh, Chef Mark LaRoche. Yeah, say it, yeah, Chef, you right? Got it. Yeah, you got it. That was good? Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about Oli Mill, and we're excited to have Oli Mill on today's show, and all the ideas that Chef Mark's going to do for us today is going to be awesome. It's going to provide a lot of value to our customers and to the industry itself and share some great products and ideas that the Oli Mill has. And I'm going to move over to Sherry. So Sherry, do you want to talk a little bit about Oli Mill, who you are and what you guys do? Sure. Great. Um, I think it's actually really appropriate that we're on the day after Canada Day. Um, we are the largest Canadian farmers cooperative. Um, we are, uh, we have many employees, 15, over 15,000 employees across Canada. Um, we have many farmers in every province in Canada that are part of our farmers cooperative, 29 plants. We export to 65 countries and um, we are really proud to be a Canadian food processor. Um, one of the things that really resounds with myself and my team um, is the desire to support the Canadian egg industry. It's really important. I think that we all recognize the contributions that our farmers make to the food safety and security um, of the food we serve and eat in Canada. So uh, we're really happy to be here today. That's awesome. Awesome. I can't believe you're that big in Canada. You're huge. Yeah. Yeah. In, Ca in the Canadian landscape. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of, some of the numbers are kind of interesting. You know, we're, we're pork and poultry. So turkeys, hogs, and chickens. And uh, we have uh, big uh, teams across the country for, national chains, regional chains, distribution, um, healthcare and institutional sales. Um, we supply many of the large national chains across the country. And uh, we also, as I said, export to 65 countries around the world. So uh, we are certainly, um, you know, a big part of the Canadian agricultural industry. Um, okay. One of the things that's great about being Canadian and being owned by our farmers is one of our biggest uh, priorities and concerns is animal welfare. So um, we we are really happy to be part of uh, food security in that sense as well. That's awesome. That is awesome. So do you want to let, let's do you want to go over to Chef now and start seeing some ideas, or do you want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing today first before we move? Well, I think we're going to uh, talk about a few things. One of them being we're going to give you guys a glimpse at our new and improved website that gives you guys a lot of resources, uh, food blogs, what's up and coming, what's what are the trends, recipes, nutritionals. It gives you guys access to a wealth of information. So we're going to touch on the website. And um, Chef Mark is going to show you some interesting recipes. And I think we're also going to talk a little bit about how you guys can keep your customers engaged, um, you know, with the increased demand for takeout and also how to um, keep your customers coming back uh, in, the, in the capacity that you're able to serve them in-house. So I think those are sort of three of the things that we kind of want to touch upon today. Awesome. Awesome. So let's, uh, let's move over to Chef. Chef, you ready? Of course I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You always have to chef that, right? So you want to start with the first recipe, I guess, eh? Let's go for it. 
Yeah, all right, all right. Well, uh, today you'll notice like if there's a theme in the, in the recipes that I'm going to be cooking. So it's it's all about spice, you know. Everything is all about spice now, and everything has to be a little bit spicier. And and uh, so you know, following the trends, uh, you'll notice like you know you say, oh, this guy's using a lot of spice and a lot of you know, but everything has to be you know, out or not ordinary, I should say. Uh, as well, you know, we are uh, focusing on mashup cooking as well. So, you know, different stuff, you know, using our product. Uh, for example, the first recipe we'll be doing will be uh, using our lard meat tenders, which is our chicken tenders. Uh, and uh, actually one of the Canada's top selling. And, uh, you know, instead of just uh, using the tenders on, on the plate, uh, there's so many ways you can use it. We'll, uh, we'll put in a taco. So uh, I was thinking, you know, to, just to start. And our first recipe actually was going to be Southwest um, chicken tacos uh, using the tenders. So um, what I, I'm suggesting is to make a um, to make the coleslaw with it. So and to make a Southwest coleslaw, you know, we need to put some um, some uh, red cabbage in it. But if you do put the red cabbage in, in your coleslaw the day before, it's all going to change color. So what I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing just a quick coleslaw. You know, to the earth. So I get my regular coleslaw and adding to that some uh, some uh, cabbage, bit of a uh, lime juice, of course. You know, if it's Southwest, you need some lime juice in there. Uh, can't have Southwest without uh, coriander, some uh, some fresh cilantro, actually, I should say. Mix it all up together. And there you go. That's it. as easy as that. You get your Southwest uh, coleslaw here. And I got my tacos that are pre cooked earlier. I could have just finished them at the last minute. Uh, and I got my lovely tenders in the oven here, in the pot here. Um, Jerry, how long has the lovely tender been around? Let Me Tenders has celebrated its 25th anniversary. <clears throat> Love Me Tenders is the number one selling chicken finger in Canada for many, many years. 25 years? Mm -hmm. So one of the great things about Love Me Tenders is that it's a very neutral breading. It's a very thin coating. So people get to really enjoy the texture of the whole muscle chicken um, tender that is used as the base of this product. It's, uh, you know, it, it's been a, a really winning product for all and all over the years. And I think one of the important things that Chef Mark is displaying is that um, having multiple recipe uses for one product can really improve your efficiency in the kitchen, especially now when uh, labor is at a premium and some, some of you are, are having difficulty finding staff for the back of the house that are mm -hmm. maybe as well trained as you're used to. So it's a really great idea to use an, an old, reliable product and use it in new and exciting ways. Cool. cool. I can't believe it's been that long. That long. Uh -huh. It's amazing. Well, obviously, it's, it's <laughs> when you see products that last so long, you know they're good. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely stood the test of time. I think most people have been raised on a Love Me Tender. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I, I think actually before Galco started making Love Me Tenders, which was um, the company that, that Ollie Mel purchased with Love Me Tenders, we no one called Chicken Fingers Chicken Fingers before Ollie Mel. And we were the mm. first company to coin the phrase Chicken Finger. No way. Yeah, in fact, we've got it trademarked. Everybody uses it, but, but the Chicken Fingers is an Ollie Mel. They roll it in. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry. Back to you, Chef. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. So as you can see, I've, I've got already, I've got the, um, the coleslaw here on, on the on the tortillas. What I put on was a uh, Cajun mayo. And what's great about those recipes is that you can, you, know, you can have a great looking dish, but using only one chicken fingers per, per tacos. And I'm just going to grab here. And you just use the Cajun dressing instead of a regular mayo dressing? Yeah, well, you know what? It, it, like I said, you know, spice it up a little bit. So, you know what? I'm, it's mm -hmm. just really, really easy. I just use a regular mayonnaise and I add some Cajun spice to it and a bit of lime juice as well to give it, you nice. know, a bit, of a, a bit of a kick as well. So, it's all about flavors, you know, all about flavors without adding too much salt either. I love the fact that you made the coleslaw the night before, but you didn't add the purple cabbage until later. Yeah, well, like I was saying earlier, you know, it, it changes the color, so. But it, coleslaw tastes so much better the day after, though. 
Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> for sure. So you know, Scottish it with a little bit of a you know, a bit of color here. Couple of uh, these. Some more. Cilantro, green onions. There you go. That's easy as that. You know, and what, what's great about it as well is that you can make it to order, you know, like I said, and, you know, and plus in the kitchen, uh, all you need to do is you know, have all your ingredients, do your lovely tenders, when you get an order, finish them up. So, and uh, there you go. Just easy as that, Southwest uh, Tacos with our lovely tenders. That's awesome. And I think this is a, a great takeout option as well, because Love Me Tenders has that really, you know, fine coating. Um, Love Me Tenders stand up really well as far as holding time. So the result when it arrives at, at customers' homes using takeout, the quality is excellent and you don't, you ha still have a nice, crisp, crunchy product. Yeah, and I, and I think that's big, Sherry, when we talk a little bit about takeout and, and what that whole world looks like. Do you want to give us some ins insights into what you're seeing around that whole area as, as well, it's exploded? Through COVID? I, think, I think it's a really interesting time and an interesting opportunity for operators to explore um, how they can retain their takeout business that they've developed and we're seeing um you know i'm from winnipeg so we're a little ahead of the game in the COVID reopening than some provinces but what i am hearing from operators um is that they are retaining their takeout business and adding to it as the different phases of opening happens for example we are now at um, we can have 100% capacity in our restaurants indoor, uh, but that obviously has come in phases. And what a lot of the operators are seeing is that they're retaining 80 to 85% of the takeout business that they established. And on top of that, now they're able to have people come into the restaurants. So I think one of the things that consumers have discovered during this time is that you can get really great quality takeout food. Um, you don't have to just order pizza. There's lots of other options. And I know my family during COVID, we started, you know, having special nights where we would order takeout from a white tablecloth restaurant and have, you know, date night at home. Obviously, can't have it anywhere else. But anyway, date night at home during COVID. And we were getting some amazing quality in takeout in some, uh, you know, great food, great restaurants. So I think it's really important to remember to, to still make this a priority because it's a part of your business you didn't have before and you can retain it as things resume normal and it can be another revenue stream for you and i think yeah you're absolutely right and i think it's it's something that i find we're we're um one from a business aspect i think it's great if people can continue that and they've learned from it and they can expand on it but uh, i think there's some things that people and you guys were talking earlier about it just some there's even best practices now coming out of how you're placing your menu online and and when you're doing the thumb scroll as you as you called it earlier and and when you know can you just share a little bit about that because i found that you nailed it because it, it is opposite to some of the things that you would do in a regular menu like a placement menu in a restaurant right There's some so, practices on online that are a little bit different now so i think one of the most important things is keeping your online offering fresh and new because one of the things that I certainly discovered during COVID was we or we have our favorites. We have our favorite takeout places. And after three or four or five or six times, eight times, okay, ordering from the same place, I started to feel like, oh, I kind of feel like something different. And then I went looking for new places. So what I realized is that if you put, if you keep your offerings fresh, always have some new and interesting things, an LTO, an online LTO, for example, that reflects maybe a new recipe or a new product that wasn't on your menu before. It keeps your repeat customers interested and keeps them like, oh, there's something new. I'm going to try that. Um, so I think that's a really important thing to keep your online menu fresh and also not just fresh in the sense that you're, you know, featuring things that are already on your menu, but adding some new things, see how they go. It's a great way to test new menu items through the online offering and get feedback from your customers. And then it'll help you, oh, maybe this is something we should add to the regular menu ongoing. So, um, and using existing products that you have in your pantry, you know, something like Love and Tenders, add a new recipe in, and uh, you may find that you, you get a new successful menu item. So I think retaining your customers and keeping them engaged, um, you, you do have to, to freshen your offerings from time to time. The you other, know the other thing, oh, sorry, sorry I'm gonna jump in there, sorry. 
<laughs> I'll listen to you talk all day if you want. No. Um, <laughs> two hours later. No, ask um, Mark. I talk way too much. <laughs> no, it's great. It's awesome information, and I fully agree with you. Now, the one thing also I want everyone to understand with these um, menu fatigue, and we got to be careful, is that what's the first thing you do when you get your food in a restaurant, and people are doing the same thing? Is you take a picture of it, right? Yeah. So, and if you're not changing up your menu offerings, and you look at the millennials and Gen Z, they're typically your focus group. You know, they're the biggest population right now for food away from home. Is that they're going to want to take photos of it? The photo, you know, they they love taking pictures of it. So if it's not something new and you're not advertising or adjusting those menus, um, I'm sorry, the camera eats first is what we've heard before. Um, we need to make sure we're changing it just for the aspect around that and how they in interact with your food when it comes to their home and encourage them to take photos of our new dishes or order it, take it home, take a photo. We'll give you a, whatever. Maybe maybe there's some sort of incentive or program you can attach to that. Um, but definitely, I love the fact about changing menus more frequently. And it's we've talked about this in the past. Like this isn't something new, but this was back before COVID that we talked about changing menus. Um, but the world is adjusting everything to have to allow you to have smaller menus, and that that helps with inventory. It helps with new ideas. Uh, your chefs are more engaged, you know, um, in business because they're thinking of new ideas. Hopefully, watching shows like today, getting something um, to put on their menu. Um, I think it's great when it comes to uh, our industry and to be able to change things up and um, and obviously be cost effective as well. And try new proteins. You know, for example, um, we have some amazing pork products like sous vide uh, pork shanks. They're natural. You can season them. You just put them on the grill. They're ready to grow. Uh, they're ready to go. You don't have to worry about, you know, cooking racks and racks of ribs just in case somebody wants to order ribs and then you end up with waste. You know, products like that that are pretty much ready to go. You can pull them out as you use them. You can put your own spin and flavor profile on them and you're not going to have to worry about food waste. Um, so try new things that way too. You know, people are getting a little tired of the same old things. So, um, and I think Jay, you made a really great point about eating with our eyes. Um, and I think don't forget the garnishes when you're doing takeout, don't forget to make it look good. Um, mm -hmm. because as you said, then people are going to open their takeout container and go, wow, like this looks beautiful. Get a picture before you eat it. That's in our house. It's like, don't yeah. touch it. Don't touch it. I don't. <laughs> I know. I always, after family dinners, I know I'm successful. At least a couple of my kids posted dinner on Instagram that I know I, I did yeah. my job. <laughs> That's so true. You get the approval. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's go over to Chef. Chef, let's go to you. All right. Well, yeah. we, 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 we talked about, you know, bringing uh, new proteins and, you know, why not putting some chicken, fried chicken in the morning for breakfast or brunch? You no, know? like brunch are really popular as well. Uh, you know, when restaurants are finding new way to, uh, to to get more business, so you know they they be able to uh, you be able to order ahead. So I I got this recipe that's so easy to make. I mean, you know, it's stupidly it's, uh, easy. So you know what I, what I'm doing is that I'm using some uh, Belgian waffles. You know, so uh, like I said, a brunch or breakfast item. I got those Belgian waffles, and uh, we have a product at Early Mel, which is the uh, breaded chicken thighs. Um, they're really, really nice, nice and uh, and you got a great spice taste to it as well. They're fully cooked, ready to be fried, um, and uh, being chicken thigh, they're really, really juicy. You know, so as you can see, three pieces of waffles, three pieces of chicken. I'm spicy. I, I said earlier I'll be using spice, so I'll, uh, once again some spice. So here I got some honey. So you get, you know, you, you, I could use uh, maple syrup, but I get some honey and harissa, uh, but I could have used uh, sambal olek, I could have used sriracha, you know, and, and cayenne pepper or whatever. So yeah, so you just drizzle your honey over your waffles. And, you know, for example, if you were sending that as a takeout, uh, I would obviously, you know, put the sauce on the side so the customer can just add the sauce to the last minute. And... The, Sherry talked about garnishing, you know, why not just, just a few green onions on it? There you go. That's how easy it is, you know. So you got your waffles, you got your sweet, you got your spice, you got your crispiness. Uh, there you go. It's as easy as that. You know, it wow. doesn't have to be complicated to be uh, to be good, you know. 
No, and I think that's a good point, Chef, you brought up because I think today when we look at labor, and I wouldn't mind talking, we'll talk to Chef in a second about labor, but it is uh, it is something that I think a lot of operators need to think about is obviously they're thinking about it, they're living it today, is that labor factor. You know, how long are you going to be able to bread your own chicken and do all those steps in the past? Um, I, I think COVID and, and the situations we've been put into, it's really getting us to rethink these items and, uh, you know, and, and to look at products that are, um, you know, finished for us and we just finish them off in the fryer or in the oven. And, you know, a lot of those processes that we did before, um, I don't know if we, we we necessarily need to do those nowadays. Well, you know, if I may add to that, Jay, uh, I mean, in the kitchen, you know, it's, it's a closed space. It's really, really narrow. And uh, now we have to keep a distance, you know. So uh, yeah. you, know, you start uh, making your own chicken tenders or your own uh, bread, your own chicken. You're going to use some space in the kitchen, which is valuable. You know, you want to use that space to do some sales. So you don't want, you know, you don't want to be breading chicken where you can just cook it and put it together and send it to the customer as well. So. So I think, uh, you know, in the future, we'll have to rethink the way we use it. You know, we work in kitchen. It's not easy. Uh, I mean, you're working shoulder to shoulder. Uh, so we have to find a way to get, you know, get a distance. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. So Sherry, I got to ask you, labor. How big is that? <laughs> She's giggling. How big, how big are we looking? Let's talk a little bit about labor and products, right? Because a lot of people are like, no, I'm going to do my own. But that's kind of takes so much time, and we just don't have that anymore. Time's not our, our friend right now. No, and you know, honestly, when you look at the labor savings and the ability to uh, use products that have some steps removed for you in the kitchen, when you look at that you can put your takeout out faster, for example, with a consistency that is really difficult to achieve if, you've, if you're trying to achieve social, social distancing in the kitchen, and in at times now, yes, having to use uh, you know labor that may not be as well trained as the labor you once had in your kitchen. So it's really important um, to look for products that can deliver that. One of the things that you know at All Mill we have done over the years is really try to become a very natural processor. So we use as few ingredients as we possibly can. We've reduced our sodium over the past uh, five years by, I think it's something like, Mark, Chef Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's about 5 million pounds of salt we've taken out of our products annually. Wow. So we are really looking to provide healthy alternatives that feel, that you can feel proud of having come out of your kitchen and be, you know, perceived as being cooked in your kitchen, obviously, you know, the menus, uh, items have been created by your chefs. But if we can remove a couple of steps for you and remove some of the touch points, because if you look at using raw poultry, for example, you've got increased res risk of food contamination. You have to thaw the chicken. You have to cut the chicken. You have to cook the chicken. You need to put it in the recipe item. So if you're using something that removes a few of those steps for you and use uh, one base protein on multiple menu items you can essentially cook create in your kitchen poultry station where you've got multiple menu items that are being made with the same base protein and then that person who's responsible for the protein station they can stay away from the guys that are chopping the lettuce and preparing other things so yeah and you can still tweak it enough to add your own flair to those products right yes exactly so I think I think uh, that's really great where you can offer variety, you can save on labor, and you can also create a more safe space in your kitchen. Yeah, and I think that's so big. And we we talked about that. We we don't want to get into the, the safety facts of what's in the kitchen, but it's definitely something that you need to build into your business model now. Is the safety in the kitchen until the consumer confidence, which I think is going to take a little bit of time to build back, unfortunately. Um, those kind of procedures are something that we need to consider. It's a huge well, and, and you know what I am really seeing that's very, very important is for operators to communicate to their customers in any way they can, yeah. the steps that they are taking for food safety. Um, I think starting using Canadian supply is a big one. We have a lot, we have the best food safety organization in the world, CIFA. So they extend to animal welfare, slaughter practices, processing practices, um, you know, everything that comes out of federally inspected plants in Canada, 
You mm-hmm. can't look for better food safety in the world. So communicate to your customers that you're that you are using CIFA inspected products in your operation. Communicate on your website what you are doing to keep people distant in the restaurant. The different things that you have done with your weight stuff, the training. The more you communicate with their, your uh, your customers, the steps that you're taking to make their experience safe and healthy, um, the more comfortable they're going to feel coming back into your your operation. Yeah, you know what? I, I totally agree, and I think it's you see that already in some areas. You know, through commercials and things like that, different larger operators are starting to communicate that. You know, the big big ones are, hey, come check us out, see what we're doing, kind of thing. And I find that awesome. And I fully agree with you. You need to be completely transparent right now and build the confidence in the consumers, um, because these little no, these little bits of news we get either from the south or from other channels uh, about what's happening out there, it scares people. And we don't. It, it happens. It's going to happen. Um, but what our, our kitchens and our restaurants are so clean prior to this and what they're doing already. Um, it is it is something that they just got to be proud of as well and share what they're doing and I fully agree. So, anyways, we're gonna move over to Chef because he's itching. I know I can't. I I worked with enough chefs to know when a chef's itching to cook. <laughs> uh, well, no, we talked about you know using the uh, one ingredient to make a couple of different dishes. Um, this next one I'm making is about uh, it's all about in- indulging, you know. One of the hottest chicken dish in uh, North America right now is Nashville hot chicken. And, uh, you know, it's using, of course, it's using uh, some uh, chicken. So I've used the same chicken that uh, I'm going to use the same chicken that we, uh, we used earlier, which is our something fried uh, breaded chicken thigh. And to that, I'm going to add a, um, a mixture of um, actually it's butter, spice, lard, lard, I, you know, when you talk about indulging. But there's also a bit of a, a sweet in there. So it's just, once again, sweet and spicy. So I'm just going to add that to our chicken. Chef, you're making a product, and I don't need to see your thunder. I make, my, I make the world's best chicken wings, by the way. Um, uh, and they're made by my mom. My mom gave me the recipe. And, and, I, I, and <laughs> you're the first time I've heard, and I've dealt with a lot of chefs over the years, adding butter into your sauce. It's exactly in hers too. And yeah. you're you doing it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, everything's better with butter. Or oh, bacon. Yeah. Oh, it's scary. Yeah. And in this one, I was surprised, you know, the, the recipe, they're using butter and lard as well, you know. So uh, oh, so as you can see, I'm uh, arranging the chicken. That's why there's pieces of bread. I'll probably get a text later. Hey, it's not your show. Yeah. He had a butter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're I don't know oh, here. and more, more, more. <laughs> my, chefs, my chefs would be like, oh, my God, why are you adding? Like, they get so mad because we didn't even deep fry our chicken wings and butter. Oh, uh, my goodness. Oh. Jay, I'm coming to Edmonton, even if it's cold. <laughs> I'm coming to Edmonton for your butter fried wings. Butter fried <laughs> wings. like, But just think about that. From a restaurant operator, that's money right there. Butter fried oh, chicken wings. You bet. You bet. Sorry, Chef. No problem. No worry, no worry. I mean, you know, but once you've tried this, you're not, you know, you you, you won't you won't be able to uh, not to finish the dish. You know, it's got that spiciness, got that sweetness, the crunchiness from the chicken, uh, uh, and the juiciness, of course, of the chicken. So it's a, and I, like I said, it's one of the hottest uh, dish in North America right now. It's on the rise. It's can you bring it up closer to the screen so? Yeah, I can see it? we would love to see it closer, Chef. It Where's the magic of the other where's hand? Your, where's your beautiful assistant? You need yeah. her to bring it closer to the camera. <laughs> bring it closer. There we go. Oh, wow. That looks amazing. Into oh, that. Wow. It's all over you. It's all over your fingers, you know, but it's all about indulging, you know. And and you know what? In those COVID time, we need to indulge, indulge as well. You know, we all uh, we all know that we, uh, uh, you know, we, we can do more exercise. We're all taking lots of walks and, you know, mm-hmm. and not being able to go to the gym, but we walk a lot, but we need to enjoy indulge as well. So this is a way to indulge, of course. You want to talk about walking? <laughs> You're absolutely right. Everyone's walking. Uh, last night, it was a walk of Palooza in my area. Um, I, I do want to talk about that because you, you also touched on something that we'll, we'll, we'll talk to Sherry here on as well is that indulgence. And I think that indulgence can and does link into comfort food. 
And yeah. I'm a big believer in comfort food through crisis. Um, we see that a lot of the times. Um, I think we see it obviously because there's usually high calorie content, high sugars, high, you know, high fat, all those things. But it also brings back a lot of memories from the past when things were good. And I, I really believe, see, look at that. Wow. Is that a pickle? Yeah. Oh, I love pickles. I didn't do it, eh? Don't you want to bite it? Hey, no. You're taunting, I, you're I, taunting I, Jay and I. I know, like, that, that, oh. you didn't have to do that. Oh, oh, that's not fair, Mark. Man. Whoa. <sighs> oh, that's not fair. <laughs> so, Sherry, what, what covered food? What, what's your take on covered food as chef? Uh, I, think, I think comfort food has been so important during this time. And I think in general, you know, we all have times where we just want to have delicious things and they make us feel better. And I think, you know, this is a time in the world where we have to take our comfort where we can get it. And uh, food is a great way to express ourselves. My kids had me making homemade donuts during COVID like, oh. <laughs> Like so crazy, but you know what? It was so awesome. We did it together. They were delicious. They, you know, we all said after the fourth one, we shouldn't have any more, but we did. But I think it's also, you know, a good messaging, um, you know, on menus, uh, certainly on takeout, you know, there's a time to eat healthy and eat right. And I think that time is all the time, but at this time, I think people really need things to feel good about, to make them smile. Um, so I think comfort food has a really big place in our menus, you know, going forward. Yeah. You know, what's awesome about that as well is that the attention of food's getting right now, because it's, it's bringing us all together. Totally. And it's, bringing, it's, it's almost helping us get through this. I, I honestly, I agree. It, I, I don't think I could have lived without the good food we ate during COVID. It was just, well, you know, it's also brought families together. It's brought people to cook together. It's brought people to order out together. We've we've never had much so much highlight on ordering out or eating, eating in restaurants right now than we've ever had. You know, get out and support your local, supporting your community, um, having chefs show great ideas. This is huge when you see where what it was in the past, right? We were having these conversations about cooking donuts or cooking at home and, and sharing ideas. I think it's, we always call it the silver lining out of this horrible world that we've had in the last few months. Um, but there's definitely some silver lining to it. And, and, and well, I'm very impressed with it. I think for operators, it is an opportunity. There's no question about it. There is a really big renewed interest in food in general. Mm -hmm. um, and trying new things and experiencing things because, you know, let's face it, life at home is kind of boring these days. So mm -hmm. if you can get some excitement from your food, I think operators have a really good opportunity, as I said, to retain their takeout business, continue to grow their dine-in business as things, uh, you know, continue to open up. But there may be a whole area of business that, that was un underdeveloped before that now mm -hmm. some operators will take advantage of and, and find that their their operations are even more successful than they were in the past. You know what, you're absolutely right. And, and I'm, I'm, I've interviewed some customers in restaurants through this crisis. And uh, there is a lot of them that took, took it as an opportunity. And did they ever strive through it? Obviously, there's a lot that just couldn't. And they, unfortunately, they didn't make it or, or they're struggling. And we know everyone's struggling through this. Um, but some took it as an opportunity in that area and really grew through it, which which blows my mind, and I'm extremely um, well. And one, of, by that. and one of the things that I've been super proud of our industry throughout this is is the the uh, the charity. You know, the the restaurants yeah. out there. You know, making food for elderly people who can't leave their homes and home delivery services and. You know, mm -hmm. I think that our industry should be really proud of our, uh, you know, of our response and our willingness to help others. And um, so I, I think that I think that this has really brought foodies together uh, yeah. in a very true sense. Exactly. Absolutely. Fully agree. So, Chef, what are you doing now? I hope chef. Well, we'll great. Next, no. chef. I am. Um... I did it on purpose to do it a, a little bit ahead because uh, the next product I'm going to present to you is our uh, tempura chicken. You know, if you look at it, it might have a, you know, it's got a bit flowery kind of a look to it. 
the reason why it was designed to hold in the sauce as well. So, you know, if you do it a little bit ahead, uh, for example, for takeout or even in a, in, a, in a steam table in a restaurant. So it was designed to stay crispy in the sauce. So that's, that's I did it on purpose just to, uh, so I toss it here in a sweet chili sauce, put some, uh, a little bit of uh, diced peppers in there and green onions as well. So I'm just gonna serve it over rice. And um, garnish it with a, once again, some bit of cilantro. We need, we need a bit of garnish in there. And a few uh, roasted sesame seed. And uh, I don't know if you notice how easy that was. And, uh, you know, it's going to stay crispy in the sauce for a minimum of 20 to 25 minutes in the sauce. So it, uh, as you can see, really easy, Asian. Once again, you know what? what's more popular than, you know, Asian food is so popular. And, and you know, I've, I've done it here in a chili thai, but I could have done it in a giraffe So I could have done it in an orange ginger. Uh, anything that's Asian with that product is perfect. You know? So maybe we can show it to you at the camera. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, it looks delicious. Dana doing a great job here. She is awesome. <laughs> Right. So those products like that, that's going back to that scrap, you know, removing a lot of those steps, being able to apply it and uh, create something different. And that is also comfort food because we know what it is. It's very simple. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Great idea. Well, I great think idea. What's, what's interesting here is all the recipes that Chef Mark has made this morning so far, all could have been done with any one of those products. For example, all of those recipes could have been executed with the breaded chicken thighs. They all could have been executed with the tempera chicken. So I think this is a really good example where you can have one base ingredient create a lot of variety on the menu and only not have to have, you know, so many different products in your, in your pantry. Yeah. And that's big, right? We, we just know money is very, we're very cautious with money right now. It's a very sensitive area. So anywhere that we can have products that are multiple use, I think it's going to be big. And then that that is that is it's great, but it also gives our chefs and our people in our kitchens a little bit of a challenge that you can say, how can you use this product multiple ways, right? And like it attaches to menu fatigue, all those different areas. Well, and you look at the risk in in keeping fresh chicken, for example. So you know you may think volumes maybe are still uncertain, right? You don't know how many people are going to go to show up in your on your patio this week or how many orders of takeout you're going to get. When you're using raw materials, raw, literally raw, raw materials, um, yeah. there is uh, there is some risk uh, to having waste due to spoil. So with these products, they're frozen. You take them out as you need them. You don't have to worry about the fragility of the product um, in, in, the, in the sense that if you're not quite as busy as you hoped, um, you're not going to have to worry about throwing out fresh chicken at the end of the week. Exactly. And, and that's big. We don't, we, our waste right now needs to be, we need to have our eyes and ears and everything on waste it's big time moving forward. So chef, what do you got, what are you working on there? All right. Well, our next product we're presenting to you is our popcorn chicken. Uh, you know, this is a fully cooked popcorn chicken. I'll take some out. I'll show you guys there. Of course, I've um, I've uh, prepared my popcorn chicken ahead, but the, but this could have been done to the order. It's so small. It's double breaded, fully cooked. Uh, great for snacking, you know, and Cher was talking about earlier, you know, adding on, you know, for delivery. So it's great, great, great for snacking. Uh, but, you know, as well, why don't you, uh, you know, you can use it up in a, uh, in a sandwich. So I decided to make a, a po' boy with, the, uh, with our breaded chicken. So I start, I start with a French baguette here. And uh, to that, I'm going to add uh, just one second, uh, a spoon, a remoulade. So, uh, you know, remoulade is a uh, mayonnaise with some, uh, it's got horseradish in there. And, you know, you put quite a bit of remoulade on, on your uh, on your bread. Add, add some uh, lettuce to that as well. Some tomato. So this is basic, you know, this is something that they, they'll eat in Louisiana. It's, it's got yeah. the cajun to it. 
be the red onions and finish it up with the popcorn chicken. I don't think you have enough on that poor sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Tons of there you tons go. popcorn chicken, you know. So there you go. You got your uh, you got your po' boy uh, popcorn chicken sandwich. It's got once again, you know, it's got that that uh, spiciness with the um, with the uh, remoulade. The remoulade has some Cajun spice in there as well. You get the crispiness of the popcorn chicken and the freshness of, of the bread and everything. So it's a great sandwich to put on your menu. That's for sure. Simple, so the, easy, effective. The popcorn yeah, chicken, one of our uh, regional chains decided to try to spice up their pizza offering. And so they they did a whole campaign on their online presence saying uh, pizza and popcorn, uh, but it was popcorn chicken. So they did a menu combo. They you know ran a campaign with a picture of a family with a big bucket of popcorn chicken. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's just an example of being creative with what, with your online offering and getting out on sales, um, at the same time. Yeah. And I think that's it's so simple to do. And I would, you know, I, I've seen some places that incorporated onto the add-ons and all those different things, um, to really spice it up. I like just to add more to their menu. I just... It's so simple to do, so, so effective. And, and honestly, I don't know anyone that doesn't love popcorn chicken. No, and you know what, I think I think that topic lends itself well to the next item that Chef Mark is gonna work with, which is the Cisco Supreme Bacon. I think everyone can agree uh, that everything is better with bacon. Uh, the thicker, the smokier, the better. So uh, one of the things that we are also seeing as far as add-ons and being able to raise your check price online, and also improve your profitability is anything that they can be added to on the menu, put it right below the item. So for example, if you've got a bacon cheeseburger underneath that menu item, you should have add a, you know, add bacon a dollar fifty or whatever. So that when they're seeing the individual menu items, they know what they can add on to the individual menu item. I'm seeing a lot of online menus where the add-ons are at the very bottom. So when you're scrolling mm. through and selecting your um, your entree, your menu item, it's not available to see till you get to the end. And then a lot of people are, you know, less than astute with the clickers, like my mom. Um, so if you offer that option when people are selecting their menu items, then you, the chances that they will add on additional things to enhance their entree um, mm. is higher. Yeah, and that's a good point because that's something that, you know, um, well, we see it sometimes on menus and in, in the old traditional menu formats, but I think it's a really good point because I, I just did that the other day when I was doing some takeout. Is that the add-ons and everything was at the bottom, and it was yeah. after you order, after you go through it, it wasn't there. And I think the thing is, is um, placing those ideas on how to enhance their their meals or adding the experience through the food by adding bacon, let's see, uh, to that um, menu item. I think is a, a really simple. Good strategy, good little tip. And who doesn't love bacon? Well, we're gonna see Chef Mark make some amazing bacon right now, I think. Okay, let's see here. Chef with bacon. It's bacon. All right, right. well, I mean, you know, bacon. Everything has been said, but nothing has been said, you know, this bacon is good with everything, you know. And it's it's even popular with Cato now. You know, people are eating it for a diet. Who, who would have thought you would have bacon on a diet? You know? But uh, bacon happened? and buttered chicken. Best diet ever. Yeah, diet. exactly. So what I'm going to make, I'm going to make a, you know, a, a oh. new, uh, new weight BLT. So what I'm using, I'm using some, uh, some here, some uh, cream cheese with chives in there. And uh, this, once again, this is a really, really, really easy recipe. So I had some, uh, some nice sliced bread here that I toasted earlier. So chefs, and, I have to jump in there because you're using cream cheese instead of mayo. Why not? I know it's brilliant. I just I, I, love, I can't wait to run into the kitchen and do this later. <laughs> That's what cooking is all about. That's all you know. Like I said, you know, it's different one, and you know, with the cream cheese, with the um, also with the um, arugula here, you know, it's gonna. It's oh, gonna, arugula. Yeah, nice. who doesn't? Who doesn't love arugula? And nice. Some nice. 
a nice summer tomatoes here on top. And as you can see, this is so easy to do. And cream, I'm, I'm still blown by this goes supreme cream. bacon. Just putting one slice, but once again, I could have put two on it. And there you go. Have you mm. ever seen a BLT like that? Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. Oh, delicious. Great, great. What, I want, what, what I want to show you guys as well, I've cooked some regular bacon and I've cooked the uh, Cisco Supreme thick cut bacon. And this is the fat I got. I don't know if you can see it good on the camera. Um, this, this is the Cisco and this is the regular bacon. Look at the difference in fat, you know, from 10 slices to 10 slices. Exactly the same. And actually, I got the 10 slices in the oven here. I'll show you guys. Sherry, why is that? Well, Cisco Supreme Bacon is something that we call green weight. So what green weight bacon is, is that as many people know or may not know, when bacon is made, um, it goes through a process of injection. So uh, the, the, the liquid smoke is injected into the, pork, into the belly to prepare it uh, for being made into bacon. So with green weight bacon, uh, that um, injection basically is we smoke it so that the, the injection does not purge off. So the meat retains a lot more flavor and the bacon doesn't shrink as much. So you just don't get that, uh, that purge off the fat. So it's delicious bacon. You really taste the smoky flavor. The Cisco Supreme bacon is made with natural smoke. So you'll see a lot of bacon that are made with artificial smoke. We make, uh, we inject our bacon at Olly Melt and the Cisco Supreme. We inject it with natural smoke, so the so the liquid smoke comes from our our smokehouse. And Cisco Supreme bacon is also smoked in a continuous motion smokehouse, which means the bellies as they're being smoked, they're in motion constantly through the smokehouse, so they smoke very evenly. So I think if you look, at screen, Sherry, you can see it on screen that the thin strips, the regular bacon, and and the other one is the uh, the thick cut. So you can see the difference in slice. So imagine. This is on one slice beside the other, but imagine on, on, on the plate, you know? Well, and I think that's a really important tip, Mark, because I think, you know, everyone is interested in, in cost savings, you know, food efi uh, efficiency and in, in, uh, food cost. And one of the tips that I can make is using a thicker cut bacon with a more smoky flavor, you can actually reduce the number of uh, pieces of bacon that you're, you use in things like sandwiches mm -hmm. and, and you deliver such a beautiful, thick chew with that smoky flavor, you're never going to have people feeling like they just didn't get that satisfaction from the bacon when you're using a thick cut. So I think a lot of people feel if they're using a thicker cut that the cost is going to be tremendously higher. It actually is lower and you deliver something that, you know, people will come back for. I personally choose restaurants based on how good the bacon is. We go out for breakfast, it better be yummy bacon. <laughs> Well, speak, speak no, you hey, Jerry, I wouldn't uh, expect nothing yeah, less. If I had a comment on the bacon as well, you know, when you have the thick cut bacon, you would think it would be tougher, but actually it's the opposite. It's softer, you know, you bite into it, it's yep. nice, got that nice flavor to it, but it does, it's not that toughness, you know, that you get sometimes from a cheaper bacon, I should say. So, so that's a good point, Chef, and, and I think that looks at, and I'm sure you brought up some other points there too, to talk about just the cost savings, right? that the smaller, the more inexpensive bacon. Now, I also was on a show the other day and we were talking about bacon as a high risk item in a restaurant when it comes to cost because people will snack on it or what's an extra slice if I have a nibble or a little piece here the server has or the chef has. Um, and when you're putting more attention to your bacon and it's not as, I think the focus on bacon is it's becoming more of a center plate item opposed to these add-ons and, and the importance like Chef did with that sandwich is such a focal point now and the bacon quality I might have a breakthrough in my brain my mindset through this whole process is that you guys have made bacon as important as like a chicken tender or these other things that you showed today as that centerpiece so don't over abuse it don't use it you know don't cheap out in it either it, it's very uh not a moment well, Bacon. And I think you made a really good point. Bacon is becoming center of the plate. Uh, Chef Mark has done some amazing things. And we actually have a chain out west that is doing an appetizer 
with candied bacon. So basically they're mm -hmm. taking the thick cut bacon, they're caramelizing it with some maple syrup, they're putting it standing up in a shot glass, four pieces with uh, maple syrup in the bottom of the shot glass. And yeah. that's an appetizer item that they're selling for $14.99. So yeah. when you think about that, that's an incredible low food cost with a high um, satisfaction delivery to the customers. Yeah. And it's it's a runaway hit. So using bacon in different ways, especially thick cut bacon can, can offer itself to a lot more, um, is a really smart choice on the menu. Yeah, it is. Because it is, it is where those, you're putting more attention to it at the center. I've seen it in appetizers. Uh, it's not uh, the add-on product really anymore. It's, it's becoming such a focal point, which you would then want to have a better quality product opposed to a cheap and inexpensive product. And, and there's there's places for that, right? In buffets and different areas. But um, Or one may argue buffets because I've heard that too, is that you want a better, stronger, thicker, good, better bacon in buffets as well. So well, and I think, you know, it, it amounts to the satisfaction, even on a buffet. I mean, let's face it, we all have our limits, how much we can eat. So <laughs> if you're if you're satisfied and you, and you get that really big meaty bite, like I know myself, if I go to a buffet and there's little thin pieces of bacon, I'll probably take five or six slices. Um, but if it's a, a, a thicker bacon, um, I might just take two So uh, and be satisfied. So I think there's some argument for that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, plus the look on, you know, if you add thicker bacon to a sandwich or burger, for example, you know, it's not going to break apart, uh, you know, in the burger. You're going to mm -hmm. get a really nice visual on, on your burger, and that's what you want. You know? Oh, I mean, nothing is worse than a burger with cheap bacon, like thin cut, like it just, it kills all that experience in the burger, you do. I find. You do, right? and if, you know, if you want bacon in your burger, you want to indulge, you want to see it, you want to taste it. Well, it helps with the open face burgers, right? Like in, in your, your burger, should, I always believe it should come open face. You should show the products, show the beautiful tomato, like all those things that are expensive, you know, like you did there, Chef. Um, be proud of it. Share it. Show it. Well, and I think the other thing that people don't realize is a lot of operators, um, you know, are cooking bacon on a tray in the oven for, for speed, right? Especially if they have a big brunch or a breakfast rush. And the, there's a lot of waste and burning of thin bacon. So if you're not, if you don't have someone basically standing at that oven watching that thing yeah. for that precise moment that it's ready, you're going to have waste. And I've seen it so many times where, you know, entire trays of bacon are burnt because it's such a thin product. It cooks so quickly and the, you know, the, the operator in the kitchen gets busy doing something else and walks away and then you've lost a whole tray of bacon. With thicker cut bacon, you have more forgiveness because you've got more time to, you know, occasionally check. So you don't have that burning um, threshold that you would with a thin bacon. So you can actually mm -hmm. reduce waste that way as well. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. I could talk bacon all day. I know you can talk bacon all day. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Huh? You know what? I know. <laughs> It's an ingredient that you can have, you know, in, uh, in every meal. Actually, I've seen bacon on, on cocktails now, like with Bloody Caesars, but you can have it at breakfast, you can snack on it, you can have lunch, dinner, on pizzas, and, you know, even in the middle of the night, you can snack on bacon. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be carrying things a little too far, but maybe not for me. No, 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 no. You need some fat food in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. uh, good fat. Good fat. Good fat. Is there any other idea, Sheriff, that you want to share right now? Or all good there? Awesome. Well, thanks again. And Sherry, any other insights you want to share as we as we wrap up today? No, I just think, um, you know, I want to finish on the note of, again, uh, I think it's really important for, that we support our Canadian farmers. Um, and I think that the more that we can use safe Canadian supply, you can advertise it on your menus. I think that that consumers will really appreciate the fact that um that you're doing that and uh and jay's just putting up right now our website our new and improved website so there's lots of information here there's blogs um you know new ideas um updates products uh, menus features so you can click on pork you can click on the sector that you're in you can go quick service you can go chicken you can select it by the the protein You'll get recipes, nutritionals, spec sheets, so you can look at the nutritionals, um, tips on reducing food waste, 
Uh, there's contacts in there as well for our team across the country. Uh, we have a, a full sales team across the country, really Ooh, strong sure. experts in the market. So there's contact information on the website. So if you're looking for someone local to give you, you know, an assist, uh, there's also a way that you can communicate directly with Chef Mark on the website. So there's yeah. Ask the Chef and Chef Mark will answer your questions. He will, you know, um, in interact with you, give you ideas. Um, so you can, you can actually access uh, Chef Mark directly on the website. And I should mention, in this campaign, all the pictures you're seeing on our website are of our actual employees. There's no actors there. <laughs> so <laughs> it had a purpose because we wanted uh, everyone to realize that, you know, Ali Mel is made up of Canadians, people, your neighbors, your friends, your, you know, um, farming community in your province. So we decided it was very important to reflect that on our website. Um, we really care about the industry. We really care about food security and the animals that, that we are privileged to work with. So uh, I encourage everyone to go to the website. You'll find lots of resources there. And um, if you need, as I said, direct support, don't hesitate to contact our account managers or your local Cisco because they, they know how to get us. <laughs> yeah, if I may add comments on the website, it's evolving as well. Our marketing team is working constantly to, to make it evolve you know so it's a uh, it's a living thing it's a uh, uh, you know I invite you to go you guys to go back off and on it yeah no I think it's a great website Jeff I've seen a lot of websites from a lot of people and that's a great website you guys should be proud of that it's 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 got a lot of stuff on there and to be able to contact you um, I know that's awesome as well just to be able to pull your ideas and help our restaurants out that's awesome well, thanks thanks Dave. it was a pleasure awesome well, I'm going to wrap up, but thanks again, Sherry and Chef Mark. Just really your insights, what you guys are doing at Oli Mill. Just so proud that we're a partner with you first. But just the ideas you're able to share with our customers and everything. Just thanks again. It's outstanding ideas. It was our something. pleasure. It was our pleasure. Thanks, Jay. No, no problem. Thanks again. And for everyone else, we're going to continue to bring you shows like this live. we got three more shows next week. This week, we only did one show with Oli Mill um, because of the holiday. Um, and then next week we start back on our regular schedule, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Wednesdays. Sorry, Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. I missed a day. I got to go have some bacon. Um, <laughs> we to have some bacon. But thanks again. And uh, we're going to bring more in. And check out Oli Mill's website. It's outstanding ideas. And hopefully you took something away from today. But thanks again, everyone. And have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye-bye now.